Hi everyone, I'm Carol Keller, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator from Illinois in the U.S. and I'm here today with four alternative cards for this month's Paper Pumpkin Kit. And at the end of the video, I will also show you how to assemble the treat box if you are having difficulty with that. All right, let's get started. Here is the box for this month's kit, which is called Spooky Treats. And this gives you an idea of what one of the treat backs, boxes, excuse me, looks like. There is a little sneak peek. The next kit will be Christmas themed. And then it shows you some of the perks of being a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. So if you are not a subscriber and you need a demonstrator, please reach out and I will help you to subscribe. It's really fun getting this kit in the mail every month. And you can also, you have access then once you're a subscriber to past kits and refills. There are a lot of products in the catalog that coordinate. So especially sometimes they are very specific sweets or bundles that coordinate with the kit. So then you would know that and something for everyone. So that is the sneak peek and a little commercial for Paper Pumpkin. If you make the kit as it is intended, you would make treat boxes. And like I said, I will show you at the end how to assemble one because when I looked at it, I saw that it was a little bit tricky. So if you need help with that, stay tuned to the end. It also comes with a stamp set, but I have most of the stamps mounted already, ready to go. The stars were the only ones that I didn't use in this kit for my alternatives. And the you always get at least one Stampin' Spot and this month it is Orchid Oasis. So I'm gonna put this aside and we will get started with the first card. Here is the first card. So the first thing I did was cut apart those treat boxes and I will show you how I did it. We're gonna start off with a basic white card base. Grab my bone folder, burnish it so it'll lie nice and flat. And then here is what the bottom of the treat boxes looks like. And I'm gonna show you what I did to cut it up. Just bringing in my trimmer. And I started with the sides and basically looked to try to put the crease or the fold right in the channel of my trimmer. I kind of chopped the ends off. Sometimes I did have to still cut them down a little bit if I wasn't exactly in the channel. So if necessary, I'll show you that as well. And then I cut apart the sections again on all the folds. The flaps I left as is. And so when you do that, you end up with obviously lots of different sizes and shapes. So in this too, I made sure that I got that crease. And so I did that with all three of the different boxes. One is white. One is pumpkin pie, and then one is striped. Let me pull it so you can see. It looks like this. And so again, I just cut a few of them, one of each color apart and started playing. So I'm gonna put that aside. I just wanted to show you my process. And so for this first card, I cut them up and I used, um, obviously I wanted the, the one that's more colorful as the center, and I'm still going to do that, but I'm gonna change it up just a little bit from what I did the first time, because we are going to use the Orchid Oasis piece instead of the black, and then we still have the pumpkin pie that we just cut out, and then we're going to use the black pieces for the sides here. I just wanted to see what that would look like, so we're gonna change it up. And I did my stamping after the fact because it looked very plain, but we are going to do it first because that is much easier. So we're gonna put these aside and we're gonna grab, I did not use too many extra supplies for this kit. It's basically what comes in there. And I will show you, we were gonna, we're going to make a bunch of cards. I forget what the total is, but I'll let you know at the end, but it's at least 20, I believe, with the way we're using the kit. So let me go through and so like I said, we used I brought in very few extras for the kit, one of which is the Memento Black ink. So I'm gonna pull in a scrap and we're gonna do some stamping with the stamps that come in the kit. I don't have any Halloween sets from the catalogs, so I'm definitely using just what comes in the kit in terms of stamps. So I think we will do the same thing that we did. We'll grab those spider webs and the Memento Black, or the spider web stamp, I should say. 
and we're just gonna stamp it randomly. So now I can, whoops, I think I'm out of camera range too. Sorry about that. <laughs> stamp it randomly and I'm moving the spider web so that it, we get different angles. And go off the edge a little bit because that looks a little bit more like the way designer series paper looks. And then for the Orchid Oasis, I think we'll do the bats since we're changing it up a little. So the same thing. Make sure, of course, that they're right side up. One thing I noticed too, sometimes with the photopolymer stamps, there's a little bit of something kind of sticky in there. And they won't stamp, the, the image won't be really crisp. If you find that they are sort of splotchy, what you wanna do is get your Stampin' Scrub and your Stampin' Mist and clean the stamp and dry it and then try again. And usually that's all you need to do to fix it. So same thing, we're gonna randomly stamp those bats. Of course, we wanna make sure they're right side up. And then maybe, let's see, a little bit on the edge there. And that's probably good. All right, so we'll take that Memento Black ink. And actually, while we have it, I think I used it on the inside. I did. I did a ghost on the inside. So we'll do that as well while we have the ink handy. And so again, on the inside. The ghost especially was one that when I first stamped it, it was not giving me a good image. And we'll put him here. You can put him on either side. And then I think we're done with the black ink. And now we're going to bring in Orchid Oasis and we'll finish our stamping. So for the inside, we're gonna grab the Trick or Treat stamp from the set. feeling I was going to do that. Uh-oh. I realized just too late that that was going to happen. So I'm going to see if we can cover it. We can should be able to cover it up. I'm going to change the design up just the tiniest bit so we can cover up the mistake. But in a way, I'm glad it's happened so that you can see that there is usually an easy way to cover up your mistakes. For the Happy Halloween, I actually cut a piece from the box. There are also strips in the kit and we're gonna use those on another card. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing again. We'll just use the strip from the kit. So that way you have plenty to use for tags. So I took one of the flaps and I cut it down to 3 eighths of an inch and I did not cut it down lengthwise. I'm gonna grab my Happy Halloween stamp. I know, is it driving you crazy all that ink? But we are going to fix it and hide it. So let's ink or er, stamp our Happy Halloween. And then we're gonna get this ink pad out of the way. Oh, and one thing I did forget, we're gonna bring Memento Black back for just a second because I wanna do a ghost on the envelope. So we are going to do that. You always wanna have your envelopes decorated. Make sure it's right side up. And we've got that cute little ghost in the corner. All right, let's get this ink out of the way before we have any more disasters. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to leave a border. So the black is going to go right up against the edge, I think. I think that's the way to fix it. And then that covers our mistake because we can't see it on the inside. Or you can a little bit, but you kind of have to be looking. And actually, maybe we'll stamp some bats. I think we're going to find lots of ways to cover. So... We are going to do that. We're going to change it up. So I am going to grab my stamp and seal. I mean, I could get a new card base, but I really just don't want to do that. So we're going to get some seal and we're going to put this one right at the edge. You could also use your multi-purpose liquid glue, but I'm going to go with seal this time. Put it right up against that edge. And Hopefully, no one will be the wiser. We're going to put our bats up here. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, I was thinking. Let's see. So we're going to do this. 
see if we can still have edges. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do is, I'm just trying to center it here. We're gonna leave no space on that side. So I'm gonna put this one on right away as well. And we will um, space the other ones out kind of based on where these are. Put this one again right up against the edge. And I do think I'm gonna do some bats on the inside. So that way, We'll center this one here and this one here, and that will work out just fine. It's usually a way to fix your mistake. And then this one goes right in the middle. And I didn't bump anything up with dimensionals till I got to the tag, so these just all go on with seal. I think we'll do this and center that. And I think before I put anything else on, I am going to stamp some bats up in that corner because I feel like you can see that it's darker there. So that is how we are going to fix that. Add some bats. Right up there. Oh, and I even goofed that up a tiny bit, but I think we're good. <laughs> okay. So now for our tag, I'm going to bring in my double oval punch and I again used scraps from the boxes to cut out the black smaller oval and the pumpkin pie larger one. All right, so I've got one of these or the large one and I can use, I should be able to use the smaller strip, yes, for the smaller oval. And then we're just going to layer those. Let's see, you know what? I don't have it. I'm gonna try that again. I'm having all sorts of troubles today. Not quite how I want it. Let's try that again. I, it's a little bit flat here, so I am going to use, try it again. I think I'm trying to be too speedy on camera. There we go. I can tell it's an oval perfect one because there's cardstock all the way around it. All right, so now we just layer again with the stamp and seal. I've got a little bit of ink on me. And then for the Happy Halloween, I just put the seal here and laid it right across. And now we're going to use some dimensionals. There are some that come with the kit. And they are our mini dimensionals. If you have the regular dimensionals, you could use those too. You just need fewer of them. But I'm going to put them, space them around so that it holds up the whole tag. And we'll take the paper off. And then we'll just place it on the front. For the embellishments, I'm using the classic matte dots. And you don't need to, you could leave it like it is, but I thought it needed a little extra something. So I'm grabbing my take your pick tool and I'm using the white ones. And actually I think this will work better with the black here that really will be more striking. We'll add some large ones and small ones. And usually I, we use odd numbers, so I'm gonna do one also here. Draws your eye around the card, and I do think it's very striking against the black, so I like it more so than this. And that is card number one, what do you think? I will be right back with, oh no, I forgot the ghost. Can't forget the ghost, I'm glad I saw that. We're almost done with card number one. The ghost comes in the kit. Maybe we'll even bump the ghost up. I think we will. I'm gonna grab some more of those minis. I didn't do it the first time because it is against the black, so it's it's sort of highlighted that way. But I think since it's the same color background, we're gonna do this. So I'll take the paper off of the dimensionals and 
Now we'll place the ghost right up here. Oh yeah, I think that's better. Make sure there's some bats in the background. Whoops, I got a backing there. Now card number one is completed. And I will be right back with card number two. Here is the second card. And again, I really wanted to use the stamps and the elements. This web comes from the box. Let me grab it so I can show you. Here it is. Here is one of the box covers actually. And so I just cut this out and I wanted to use that as the focal point of the card. So this time, whoops, I'm gonna put this over here. I'm starting with a fresh freesia card base, one of the colors that coordinates with the kit. And we're gonna do some stamping on this first. So I'm gonna bring back my scrap. And I decided to use the webs and the spiders, obviously going along with the theme of the center of the card. So I'm gonna bring in my memento black again. And I think we'll put it up there a little bit out of the way this time. And for the web, again, I'm stamping all around the card and turning the web. Remember to go off the card a little bit. And I'd say that looks pretty good. And I'm grabbing the spider now. And the spider, it's hard to tell which side is the, which way is up kind of without stamping it first. But to me, that looks like the head is at the top. So then we're going to stamp this also randomly around the card. And I know the center part's going to be mostly covered. I'm going to try and go over this one again. I think that probably looks pretty good. And then I also, this time I did bring in a strip that comes in the kit rather than cutting one down from the box using that Happy Halloween, but this time in the Memento Black. And then on the inside, I did trick or treat and another web and another spider. So we'll do that as well. And these cards come together pretty quickly. And that was my goal was to make simple cards. We don't need many fancy embellishments because a lot of time we're just giving them to kids and they don't maybe appreciate our work the way an adult would. So here's a way to get a lot done in a short amount of time. Grab that spider again. And that's it for the inside. And actually you could even use, well, I guess I was gonna say you could use Orchid Oasis for the trick or treat, but since we're using black for everything else, probably makes sense to just keep all with the black. We will take that memento ink out of the way. And I have taken one of the spiders that comes with the kit and cut down the web, like I said. And then I just have a scrap of black that is two and three quarters by four. And so it's enough that it will mat the web. Whoops, which we're gonna put this way. And so for this, I am gonna use my multi-purpose liquid glue just because the edge is a little bit narrow for my seal. You could also use the glue dots that come with the kit. And we're gonna line it up here to make an even border around the three sides of the web. And then I am gonna use my seal, even though this is a little bit narrow, I'm gonna use my seal for the sentiment. Centering that underneath. And then using my seal again to put this on the card, to attach it to the card. Ah, my little mix up of the spider doesn't even matter because it doesn't show. And even this, um, I was gonna show you a trick which I still think I can do of how to fix that too. I was thinking just taking my basic black marker 
and using the fine tip end rather than the thick brush tip. And you can kind of go over it. If you're really unhappy with your stamping, you can also re-stamp it like I did with the spider that's underneath here. But you can be a little more exact, obviously, if you're using the marker. And so now all we have to do is attach the spider. And I did not attach it with dimensionals. I just used my glue dots that come with the kit. And that was partly because I had kind of flubbed up the stamping of the spider and I wanted to cover it up. So I think um, I still will, I think I'm just gonna move it a little bit lower. I want all of that beautiful fresh freezer to show here. So I'm just gonna move it a little lower, but I am gonna use the glue dots because it would be hard. We'd have to cut the dimensional pretty small to get to the edge where the glue dots that come with the kit are nice and small. So they work nicely for this. And that should be all we need to hold the spider on. So I'm gonna take the paper off and then the glue dot hangs over just a little. So I'm just gonna push it in so it won't show. And then we'll put that spider right in the center. And card number two is finished. Here is the third card. And I didn't realize until after I had finished all of the cards that I had neglected to use these wonderful adhesive backed stars that come with the kit. There are two sizes of them. And so I added them to this card. But after I had added some of the matte dots, the black ones that come from that same set, the classic matte dots that we used on the earlier card. And so I'm not going to use them this time. I'm just going to use the stars because I think it's a little bit of overkill. So this time I'm starting with a basic black card base. And we're going to line the inside because it is dark, of course, with a piece of basic white, which is four inches by five and a quarter inches. So we'll do that right away. And that way we can stamp and write and it will be easy to see. So on the inside, I stamped Happy Halloween and used the bat stamp to coordinate with the ones on the outside. So we will do that. Getting lots of use of that memento black today. And I think we'll do the same thing on the envelope, which actually I just realized I forgot to do an envelope for the last card. So I'll pull that in as well. For this card, we're just gonna use the bats. And for the previous card, since it has the spider and the spider web, we're going to do the same thing on the envelope as we did on the inside of the card. So a web and the spider. So that goes with the previous card. We don't want naked envelopes. And to finish the front, we will stamp our trick or treat and it comes, this die cut comes with the kit. So we'll stamp trick or treat right on that. And that is all of our stamping for this card. So now what I have is some of the die cuts again from the kit. There are six of these so we use three of them on each card so you can make two cards and that's right too for the previous card there are six box tops so you can make and six spiders so you can make six of this card and for this one i didn't count but if you do the different color variations with the boxes, you'll get more use out of them. So for example, if you did another card, I do like the idea of using the colors on the center because it brings it all together. But if you changed up and did another card that had black and fresh freesia, you could use the smaller pumpkin pie strips on the edges that would get you more cards. I did not figure out how many you could do but I will say if you go by the ghosts in the kit, you could do six cards. So six cards of this, six of this, 
two of this one and actually two of the next one. So you would get, what is that, 12, 14, 16 cards. So I lied, I said I thought it was 20, but it is actually 16 cards that you could make with the kit and you would use up almost all of the die cuts. All right, let's continue with this one. We also are using three of the pumpkin pie strips from the boxes. All right, so we have these three pieces, again, cut from the box, and they are just under an inch in width, same as these are, and I cut them down to two and a quarter inches so they'd be the same length as these. And then we have to make sure our bats are right side up. So the way I did this was alternating them on the card front. And I wanted the trick or treat to be really prominent. So instead of spacing them out evenly, I moved them toward the center and I moved these out so that it would kind of cover the card a little bit more. So I'm gonna start with the center ones and get my stamp and seal. And I'm just going to lay it out where I want it to go till I know that it's that it is exactly where I want it to be and straight. So I'm leaving a little bit of an edge on the left. And a little bit of an edge on the right. And this is the hardest part is lining these up so that they're straight across from each other. I'd say that looks pretty good because this is probably a tiny bit wider than this one. And then it's easy to put the rest of them on because we're just going to push them toward the center, leaving again, just a little bit of a border, maybe a little bit more. And so before we put the tag on, I have some gingham ribbon and I also have some glittered organdy ribbon that I've colored with my pumpkin pie blend. I had just this ribbon on at first and I felt like it needed more color. So I ended up using both of them together. So let me move the gingham out of the way and I will show you how I colored it. Again, I used my Stampin' Blend, my dark pumpkin pie blend, and the brush tip or the thick end. And you just kind of hold it almost parallel to the ribbon. And I just colored it until I got a piece that was long enough that I could fold it and have it go almost the length of the card. It just takes a few seconds to dry because it is alcohol ink. We'll give it a trim. And then I'm gonna cut a piece of the gingham that is the same length. Or thereabouts. And then I'm gonna fold them over together. But I want them so that they're sort of next to each other so that they both, I can see both ribbons. And then I'm gonna take glue dots. Actually, I think I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm gonna take the inside one, the one that we've colored with pumpkin pie, and I'm gonna grab a glue dot. And actually, probably a couple since they are smaller. And I always use glue dots to attach the ribbon to itself to fold it over. Take off the papers. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put two more on each side so that we can adhere the gingham ribbon over it. And take off the papers. So now we're gonna lay the gingham over it. But again, not so that it's right in the middle, but so that it sort of overlaps like this, or is more next to it actually. I want them both to show through. And then again, a couple more glue dots on the front end. Whoops. Sticking to me. Let's try it. Let's try that again. 
And this time I only have the glue dots on the front because I'm gonna attach it to the tag. But then I wanna bump the tag up so I'm gonna use dimensionals for to hold it um, in place, to hold everything in place. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back of everything. And then flip it over and put it on the card. And so I did, you could add the stars first, but I did add them last because again, they were an afterthought. And I'm gonna do it just a tiny bit differently from the way I did the first time, but it will be very similar. So I'm gonna grab the stars and my take your pick tool. And for this, I'm gonna center it more in the middle, I think, instead of putting it at the top. So let's see. But we'll put the smaller ones toward the top and the bigger ones in the middle. And trying to keep with my odd numbers. So we're gonna sneak that guy in right there. And then the same thing over here, and I think we're gonna work, it worked out better this way because the ribbon was on this section before, but this time it's not. So we'll, we'll make it easier. And this one I changed up and did it up and down. Whoops, missed it. And with the stars kind of going every which way. And then on this one, we will do the same thing as up here, except the big stars will be in the middle and the smaller ones will be toward the bottom. And here we will have a little interference from the ribbon. All right, so that is card number three and we are on to the last card. Here is the last card that I designed. And for this one, I wanted to find a way to use the spider webs because that was pretty much the only thing in the kit that I hadn't used so far. So for this one, I'm starting with an Orchid Oasis card base. And I debated, I debated doing it on basic white, but I was really not super happy with the way it looked. But you could pick up pretty much any of the colors in here. So definitely some options. And again, we're going to do uh, an inside basic white layer. That's four inches by five and a quarter inches so that it's easier to see if we write on it. And for our stamping. And we'll do the inside first again. We did Happy Halloween. This time I did do it in the Orchid Oasis and then a spider and a web. So I've got my Orchid Oasis ink pad and that Happy Halloween stamp. And then again, Memento Black for the web and the spider. So the inside is done. Oh, and we need that once more for our sentiment. Again, there are six of these, so we're using four in the kit. And I've got my trick or treat stamp. So you will have a couple of extra things if you want to make other cards yourself, but that is all the stamping on this one. So again, here are the spider webs that come with the kit. And from one of the boxes, I cut, I used the strips instead of the larger spaces like we used on the first card or the larger sections, I should say. And so we are going to space these toward the bottom with seal, offsetting them a little bit from each other. And I'm bringing in that black and white gingham ribbon again. And I cut about an 11 inch section, but basically this is what I did was just curl it back and forth. So you don't even really have to measure and then cut it right there. All right, and to adhere the ribbon, we're gonna take some more of those glue dots from the kit and we're gonna put a bunch of them on the back basically from the top to the bottom of the tag. And we'll take the paper off. And now again, we're just gonna fold, oops, the ribbon. Like 
that. And now we'll use some of those mini dimensionals. And actually, I think I'm gonna cut along the edge so I have longer pieces. So that I can lay it across like this so it holds everything in place. And then adhere it up here. And I use dimensionals also on the webs. And then placing the webs at different angles. And last but not least, we'll add some of the stars. And one here. So again, we have our odd numbers. And then card number four is complete. I'm gonna bring all of them in for you to see. But first for our envelope, we're gonna again do the spider and the web. I think I forgot that. We'll bring that memento black one more time. And now card number four is complete. So again, here was card number three. and card number two, and card number one. And I'm bringing both in because I do like the variations and kind of changing up the colors. I think that helps you to use up some of the materials a little bit better and making it a little more efficient. But those are the cards. I hope you like them. And I will also, like I said, show you how to put the box together because there are enough supplies that you could probably make a couple of boxes and folding them is just a little bit tricky so i'm going to show you how to do that so this is one that i made so i'm going to show you how to decorate it too because there is enough left in the kit i still had plenty to i'll be able to put this box together for you but we're going to stamp a little bit on the front first so it's similar to what is shown in the brochure that comes with the kit well actually it isn't that similar i took the idea of the bats so this is a little bit different from what comes in the kit. So, because we've used up some of the supplies, but there definitely were some supplies left to use, like the label. So we're gonna use that. Cause there are actually a bunch of labels that didn't get used. So I am using the wider ones that are perfect for that enjoy this spooky treat sentiment. And it does obviously fit the fact that it's a treat box, but you can see there are others. Um, you may use some of these if you don't cut down the smaller ones, but then there are others that you can use if you wanted to as well. All right, so we've got Memento Black. And we're going to use that for the sentiment. and for the ghost on the front. So this will be the top of the box. And then I did take the idea for the bats from the way the original box was decorated. So I'm gonna bring in my Orchid Oasis for that. So that's it, just a little bit of stamping to decorate and then we're gonna put this on with our stamp and seal. And the top of the box is easy. We just fold on all the score lines. And then the extra flap goes underneath like this. And there is tear and tape that comes with the kit because of course you want a nice strong adhesive to hold your box together. So we'll put a couple of strips on there.
and I like to use the sharp pointy part of my take your pick tool to take them off because it works nicely and I adhered it so there was just a little bit of an edge I didn't go right to the edge I left a little bit whoops come on Ooh, I might not be able to do this so I have it crooked maybe I can all sorts of issues today so yeah there's maybe an eighth of an inch I'm an eighth of an inch from the edge and it'll make it just a little bit easier to slide it on so then I know it will fit now for the box so we open it up and you're going to again fold all the edges to start with it just takes a couple of seconds and then, all right, I started over because I realized I had done it wrong. So I folded all the sides. So we're gonna do the short sides first, I believe. Down and probably just like that, I believe. So that they're gonna be sitting, these little flaps will be sitting underneath. I did them last, the last time, but I think this is correct. So you have them sitting like that. Then you're gonna take the short side and make sure it comes over the two flaps and then you're gonna fold in. Yes, that is how it works for sure. So that you've got this little flap also on the bottom. And then we're gonna fold in the longer side over these two flaps. So up and then down and in so that this creates the floor. So I actually did my first one incorrectly, but that is the correct way. Then the box is very stable. It stays all in place with nothing coming out. And then you put the treats in and then put the cover on. Like that. And then there you have your box. So that is how to do it. If you have issues, just back that video up and look at it again, because that is definitely the way you do the sides with the little flap on the bottom, then you do the short side, and then you do the longer side with the bottom that covers everything up, and it, it, it um, kind of snaps into that little hole there so that it holds it in place. So that is it. That is an extra little bonus project for you and a little tutorial on how to put the box together. I couldn't tell, I know that Paper Pumpkin has a video and I didn't look at it yet, but I couldn't tell from the directions how to do it, but I was able to figure it out myself and partly because I've done a similar box to this one previously. But thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you watching every month my alternatives and leave me some love in the comments if you like what you see because it really means a lot to me. If you don't have a demonstrator, reach out and I will help you get set up with a paper pumpkin subscription or if you just wanna try one kit. If you are in the area, I'm in Northern Illinois, right on the Wisconsin border. I do paper pumpkin parties every month. So if you have, uh, if you are a subscriber of mine, you can come and put your kit together and there's no cost to the class. And then of course you also have access to my alternatives if you're interested in those. Check out my other, the rest of my YouTube channel. I have other cards, scrapbook pages, home decor items, tips, techniques, and I'll be coming out with some beginner videos probably at the beginning of December. I've been working on some of those. So check everything out and I will see you again soon. Take care everyone. Happy stamping.